Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hello, 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 hello. This is R.C. Blakes, and y'all already know how excited I am to be here. I'm so glad to have as many of you coming in and uh, tuning in from all over the world. I'm just really excited about um, just the international gathering of queens and kings that God has blessed us to uh, witness on this platform. I, I'm just so grateful. My heart is just so filled with uh, gratitude for the support we get from all around the world. It means a lot to me. Well, tonight I want to deal with something that um, should be a help to, especially to women who really desire uh, relationship with, um, you know, a great man. You know, when I say a great man, I'm not, I'm not talking about uh, necessarily. He doesn't necessarily have to be a rich guy uh, financially, but he's 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 rich in terms of character. Um, he has a an amazing work ethic. This guy has figured out uh, his purpose in life. He's working towards that. He's a man that is uh, personally fulfilled and happy. And uh, he's a guy that's big enough to accommodate um, the woman in his life. He's a guy that uh, is mature enough to support the visions and the dreams of, of his woman uh, without being intimidated. This is a great man. He has a, he has a great future. He has a he has a growth plan. Um, this is a great man. Well, if you're going to track this guy, in my opinion, I just described a high value guy. I don't believe a man is high value because of how much money he makes. I just don't believe that. And I mean, we have too many examples that disprove that. And I know that, you know, they say, well, it's a certain system in the world that deems one high value. Well, my system says that high value does not begin nor does it end with the bank account. It, it, it begins and ends with the internals of a man and uh, the vision and the future of a guy. But if a woman is going to be attractive to a great man, the kind of man I just described, you may call him high value, uh, you know, I do know that he's not a common man. This is not a guy that you will find on every corner. If this is the kind of guy you really desire uh, to be attractive to, I think you might want to listen to these uh, points that I'm going to lay out for you today. Because with all of the, the, the current rhetoric around feminine, masculine, high-value man, high-value woman, the misconception is that great men only want women for their sexual value. And I do know all men don't agree with me. All men are not, you know, you can't put us all in the same category. Some men have their own mind and they live their life, their lives by their personal philosophies. And every man has a right to that. I made a post on Instagram the other day, you know, about how um, I told a young man, you don't want to live your life just playing games. And one man got in the comments and he said, well, he disagrees. He is his right to live his life and you know, play as much as he want to play and grow old and see what the outcomes are. That's his, that's his rights. So all men 
you know, are not on the same page with this. But um, the guys that I'm talking about that, you know, that I just described, they are on the same page with what I'm getting ready to lay out for you today. And you've been made to believe as women that your sexual value is of the highest uh, importance to a man. Don't get me wrong. A man definitely, men definitely, we are definitely built to desire women that are desirable to us, you know. But when you when you talk about a great man or the kind of man I just described, you're going to have to bring more. <laughs> you're going to have to bring more to the program than than hips and lips and batting other eyes and silicone in the lips and you know and all this kind of stuff, it's going to require more than your sexuality. And I'll, I'll explain why it requires more. Now, if, if all a man wants you for is just another notch on the belt or another sexual conquest, your, 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 your size, your sexuality, you know, that's paramount. If, if all he wants you for is just a kind of fling of a thing. But if a man is really looking for a wife, it's going to require more than your sexual value. While this is largely true, again, the sexual, it's, I don't want to undermine the truth here and make you believe that, you know, you're being attractive and, and you're being the kind of woman that a man is sexually attracted to is not important. I'm saying to you that there are some things that transcend this. And while you're spending all of your time in the cosmetic surgeon's office or in the beautician's uh, shop or at the, 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 the Saks Fifth Avenue or the Neiman Marcus or the Barney's, there's some stuff you're going to have to bring to the table that you can't purchase. And it's not external. It's going to have, it's going to transcend the visual. Um, because this type of man is attracted to a lot more than a woman's measurements or how sexual of a temperament a woman has. If you go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 22, it reads like this. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Whosoever finds a wife. And at the time this was written, it was clear that uh, the only person that searches for a wife is a man. Wasn't confused. It was a man, anybody that wants a wife is a man, anybody that wants a husband is a, is a woman. So we know here that it's talking about a man. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. So this guy here, this great man here, was not uh, in pursuit of a woman. He was in pursuit of a wife. And just like I, I, I started off by saying, great men are few in number, number, wife material, or women that would qualify presently as wives, these women are also few in number. Now, every woman has the capacity to be a wife, but every woman does not have the mindset to be a wife. And in a lot of cases, you have not been wifed because your mindset is not there. You have a desire in your heart, but you do not have a corresponding mindset. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so will he be. You will only attain to the level of your consciousness. And if your consciousness is not set on wife, you will not be attractive to husbands. Doesn't matter how good you look. How many beautiful women do you see? Sometimes the sexiest women in the world can't find husbands. And women that we might deem as, you know, 
homely, not as attractive. They seem to get, you know, <laughs> one husband after another in, in a lot of cases. It's because you're not wife material because of anything external. You're wife material because of everything internal. You see, a wife is not discovered in the eyes. A wife is discovered in the soul. And so when a man's soul is, is made to feel a certain way around a woman because of what's coming from her inside or insides, it's then that that man knows that he's found wife material. My wife is uh, one of the most beautiful women in the world. And her beauty was not enough for me as a young man to know that she was my wife. I had, I had been with women enough to know that you couldn't uh, just make a woman your wife because she was a beautiful woman. Because, you know, if, 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 if that's what your uh, criteria is, is it criteria, criterion? I always get confused with that. But if that's what you're looking for, uh, what happens when your immature soul as a man gets uh, uh, accustomed, familiar with her? What do you do? Do you just leave her and go off and cheat and find somebody else that's beautiful? Because even Holly Berry, who's once declared to be the most beautiful woman in the world, men have cheated on her. It's because you cannot determine that a woman is your wife because when a man wifes a woman, it means that he's ready to commit to that woman. You, beauty and sexuality are not enough for a man to make a lifelong commitment to a woman. And so though my wife was beautiful and young and uh, all of the other things that they say, you know, play into whatever is supposed to make a woman of high value. Um, there was a point I said, I don't think I want to get married to anybody. And she had to leave me. And it was after I sat and really pondered and I thought about the internal qualities of this woman that I realized this woman was my wife. And then I went back and I pursued her to be my wife, not because of looks, but because of things internal. Now, um, so great men are not looking for women. They're looking for wives. The question is, we already know you're a woman. People are confused about how to know if you're a woman. Go look in the mirror. That's all you got to do. Go to your restroom, your bathroom, whatever you want to call it. You know, hopefully <laughs> by yourself, look in the mirror. You can, tell if, you can tell if you're a woman. We already know you're a woman. What we need to figure out is, are you a wife yet? Because if you're not a wife, as beautiful as you are, it's going to be very challenging for you to attract husband. Only wives, well, mostly wives attract husbands. Sometimes husbands get deceived and get caught up. In, in all of the hype that's going on in the world as well. And men get drawn into toxic relationships with, with toxic women that they should have never entangled themselves with. But mostly, if a woman finds, or if a husband finds a wife in a woman, she's wife material. So let's get into it, because my time is running already. Number one, how do you become attractive to husband material, to a great man? How, do, how does a woman become attractive? Okay, Bishop, it's not, okay, it's, it's not the gym. Don't cut the gym out. Keep doing the gym, but it's more than the gym. Okay, Bishop, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the wardrobe. Keep dressing properly. Keep on looking your, looking your best. Keep on wrapping this situation properly, but it's more than the, it's more than the wardrobe. Oh, okay. So Bishop, it's not, it's not the makeup. It's not, you know, it's not the beautiful skin and all. Keep on going through all of your beauty routines. It's, all of that's important, but it's more than your makeup. Number one, manners and etiquette. Manners 
and etiquette. How many times have I been in one of these high-end restaurants and I see young women or even older women for that matter come in beautifully arrayed, most one of the most gorgeous women in the room. All of the, the designer clothes on just got out of the, the Bentley or the or, or, or the or the Benz or, or, or the Rolls Royce. Diamonds flashing and no etiquette. No manners. And then you see the little man coming in behind her. And you can look at him if you if you if you can see like I can see. You can look at him and tell he ain't doing nothing but just playing. He ain't got this is nothing but a booty call for him. Even if he married her, she's one of many. You can all you can look at him and tell this is not a great man. This is just a man that's spending his money on a woman that's overly materialistic and he just paying to have access to her body and to go around the streets and, and take Instagram pictures with her to improve his brand because his brand is player. She ain't got no manners. She has no etiquette. She loud. She popping all this gum. You see, a man of credibility, reputation, and destiny is attracted to a woman that is refined, polished, and dignified. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know how in the world. Here I am. I'm in the gym five days a week. I don't wear nothing but Mac makeup, and and I'm a I'm a size six, I'm a size five, and my girlfriend don't work out. And child, I ain't gonna even tell you what her size is. And she got she she got all these quality men, and I I seem to keep getting the clowns and crowns. The thing your girlfriend got that you don't have is manners and etiquette. She knows how to carry herself. A great man is not going to tolerate the buffoonery. And I paused right there because I want you to think about what I just said. A great man is not going to tolerate the buffoonery. I know you've been deceived to believe that because you cute and all of that, that that puts you at the top of the totem pole. That puts you at the top of the totem pole for certain kinds of men. But the marrying kind, you are not at the top of the totem pole. You see, because a man can take a woman that may be a little overweight, maybe doesn't know how to dress herself, he can send her to the gym and help her lose weight. He can walk around the neighborhood and help her lose some weight. He can bring her down to Neiman Marcus and pay for her new wardrobe himself, but he cannot give a woman manners, etiquette. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 12 and 4, a wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. No man wants to marry a disgraceful woman because this woman ultimately, as we're going to see in a second, has to represent this man. No man wants a out here representing him. I don't care how cute you are. You ignorant, don't have no manners, no etiquette. You know, you all out here using the wrong spoons, the wrong forks. You mean you can Google that? You hear his man bringing you to a high end restaurant. You you haven't even taken the time to take your smartphone to Google what fork is for what and what spoon is for what. No etiquette, no manners. People pulling the chair, the the the, the waiter pulling the chair for you. You don't even know how to say thank you. Come on now. Oh, I got, I got, I, I, I've been, I've been waiting to talk about this. I promise you, I've been waiting to talk about this. We can hear you on the other side of the restaurant. Here, you supposed to be a lady. We can hear you on the other side of the restaurant. I gotta go to the bathroom because I gotta pee. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Did the woman just say I gotta go pee? That's too much information, dear. We, we don't, we don't, we, you know. You probably just need to say, excuse me for a second. And if you want to say more, um, I'm going to the powder room. 
We don't need to hear I'm going, I need to go to the bathroom because I got to pee. Oh my goodness. I mean, you don't even hear dudes saying that. Dudes generally say, man, I'm going to the restroom. Where's the restroom? But here you're giving us a whole visual all across the room because you have no manners and no etiquette because you've not taken the time to learn and nobody's taught you. So every woman that really desires, oh, I got a little winded there. I got, got really passionate about that. Every woman should consider some kind of etiquette course or school. If you can pay for a Beyonce concert, you can pay for an etiquette class. There's no substitute for a woman that knows how to behave in all settings. If I bring you to the barbecue, you need to know how to behave. If I bring you to the White House ball, you need to know how to behave. And if you're going into a, a situation that's maybe a little above anything you've ever done, go and get the information before you enter that situation. Because a great man requires that you represent him well. And see, there's certain things that, okay, let me, let me finish here. Go to 1 Corinthians 11, 7, 7 through 9. Listen to what it says. A man ought not to cover his head since he is the image and glory of God, but woman is the glory of man. For man did not come from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. Notice how it says the woman is the glory of the man. In any scenario, a man is reflected in the condition of his woman. And wise men choose women who know how to represent with dignity. So when a great man is, is looking for a woman, he's not first looking for your size. He's not first looking for your makeup. He's not first looking for how sexual of a, you know, demeanor you have. He's looking for a woman that has character and dignity, and this is displayed in manners and etiquette. Listen to how Proverbs 11 and 16 reads, a kind-hearted woman gains honor, but ruthless men gain only wealth. But a kind-hearted woman gains honor, a woman that has etiquette and knows how to carry herself will gain honor. So that's why your friend that may be a little homely, a little overweight, you know, uh, is, is having more success with quality men than you may be having. You cute, but you ain't got no class. Because somebody made you believe that class is in the designer brand you wear or the makeup you use or, you know, how high your skirt is hiked up. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Now, number two. Number one, etiquette slash manners. Number two is language. Kind of bleeds out of etiquette and manners because, you know, etiquette and manners is largely modeled in the language a woman uses. But a man is drawn to the language of a woman. You see, a woman's voice and words move something in a man positively or negatively. And this will be true throughout the duration of the relationship. Initially, the language of the woman attracts something in the man and the man opens his ear and he's drawn to the sound coming from the woman's soul. He's seen a million and one beautiful women, but it's not often that he hears the language of a woman that moves something on the inside of him. Again, I'm not talking about the common everyday guy that, you know, has bought into the idea that being a player and having multiple women makes him, you know, a high value man. That's a guy that just needs to simply grow up. I'm talking about a full grown man that's ready to make a life with a wife. There's, there's something that he's attracted to that we don't typically talk about, and it's your language. Your language will impact a man 
positively or negatively. And when your language is negative, you will get negative responses. And a negative response from a full grown man is usually no response. If your language is positive, you will get a positive response from a man. He will serve you. He will accommodate you. He will bend over backwards for you. But the moment your language becomes disrespectful, he will then begin to pull away from you. And if it persists, he will eventually leave you where you are. He's not going to go through the dramatics of cussing you out and trying to put his hands on you. That's not what grown men do. But but I'm getting off track. Go to Proverbs 31, 26. The Bible says of the virtuous woman, it says that she openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. How many women do you know today? Come on now, honestly, that fit Proverbs 31, 26. That open their mouths with wisdom. And in their mouths are or in their tongue is the law of kindness. How many women do you know? I mean, in, in a lot of cases, women are so vulgar and negative that they even, even the words they type with their fingers come across as poisonous. Gone are the days where you run upon most women and they are polite and kind and speak wisely and not foolishly. Gone are the days that women didn't talk, that women don't talk too much, that they over talk themselves and put themselves in precarious positions because they talk too much gossiping and slandering and lying and, and all of the other stuff that goes along with somebody that runs her mouth too much. The Bible says of the virtuous woman or the dignified woman that would be attractive to a great man that would be a husband level guy. The Bible says she opens her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. What does this look like? The language of, of a wise, dignified woman. Uh, letter A, her tone. Her tone. She, she is not, this woman is not a loud, brash, ignorant, gross kind of uh, personality. This, this lady has a peaceful spirit. Her tone is, you know, even, even if she's getting, even if she's getting somebody together, her tone is at a certain level that reflects her dignity, her feminine dignity. You know, you know, while while, you know, some women are kicking their shoes off and I'm going to burn this blankety blank blank. And you you don't know who you blankety blank messing with and reaching out in their purse, getting Vaseline and all this good pine in here. All they're doing this, this this lady right here, you know, her tone pretty much stays the same and she'll she'll accomplish the same thing or greater, you know, by simply saying this is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. Excuse me. Have a good day. And she'll walk off. Because this lady's language reflects who she knows that she is on the inside. She's never going to be loud. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 21, 19. It's better to dwell in a desert land than with a contentious and troublesome woman. A woman that gets loud and she gets angry and yeah, oh no, 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 no. A letter B, her vocabulary, her language is, you know, modeled in her tone. Letter B, her language is modeled in her choice of vocabulary. She is not a woman whose mouth is profane and vulgar. 
I mean, I think I know y'all think it's cute, and the world has made you believe that it's it's acceptable to just be out here cursing like men, like dudes. But honestly, a man that a man that uses vulgarity will look at you crazy as a woman if you out here trying to match his vulgarity. Mm -mm. No, no, you 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 are, you a lady. There's a certain there's a certain standard you should hold yourself to, and your vocabulary should model the fact that you are a lady. I've heard my mother, my 81-year-old mother, use profanity one time in my life, and it was a time when my father had done some things <laughs> that were completely, that guy right there, he had done some things that were completely unacceptable. I mean, completely completely unacceptable. I ain't putting his business out here because he ain't here to defend himself, but he told it himself when he was here. He had done some things that were completely unacceptable. And my mother said to him in no uncertain terms, this ain't going to go down like this. Only time I ever heard my mother curse. Now I heard her, I heard her angry with him a lot of times, never had to use profanity because ladies are not profane. 2 Timothy 2.16 says this, But avoid all irreverent babble and godless chatter with its profane empty words, for it will lead to further ungodliness. When, when you, as a woman, allow yourself to become as vulgar as a group of men, that is an indication that your consciousness is on a, it's in a downward spiral. And, and it doesn't get better from there. See, there's a certain level of dignity that you have to maintain as a woman. And one of the ways you maintain your dignity is that you just don't allow certain things to come out of your mouth. You don't, and you certainly don't allow your man or your children to hear you using certain language. Now, if, if, if you with your best girlfriend and it's just the two of y'all, well, you know, you know, it, it, it is what it is. I mean, preferably you probably shouldn't do it then either. But my point is, you should have such a focus on who you are and the standard that you've set for yourself that we just not going to hear that coming out your mouth. You, you're, not, you're not even, I mean, you're at, you're at this level where you're not even going to repost something that's, that's uh, you know, just spewing out profanity. How many days do I see stuff from young people Excellent messages, excellent messages, but I can't repost it because they fill it up with all of this unnecessary vulgarity, and that ain't who I am. I can't reflect that. Now, well, let me move on. Number, letter C, how does the woman reflect her dignity in her language? Letter A, we said her tone. Letter B, we said her vocabulary. Letter C, her timing. She knows when to speak. She knows when not to speak. And see, a man pays attention to that. She knows when to speak. She knows when not to speak. First Peter 3 and 1 says, In the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands and subordinate, not as inferior, but out of respect for the responsibilities entrusted to husbands and their accountability to God and so partnering with them, so that even if some do not obey the word of God, they may be won over to Christ without discussion by the godly lives of their wives. Your, your timing, the, the time you choose to address something, if you choose to address something, it's the way you handle yourself that sends a signal even to your man that you are a dignified woman, you are a godly woman. And what he's saying here in the text is sometimes it's your level of personal dignity that becomes the greatest witness to your man. For instance, if he's not saved or if he's saved, but he's not committed to living, you know, to the full extent of the word of God, it's the dignified godly lifestyle that you live. It's the way you handle yourself. It's when you, 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 and under normal circumstances, you would have cussed somebody out, but you choose to move away from that and you address it at a later time in a more appropriate way. 
because you 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 reflect your your dignity that becomes most attractive to a great man through not only your tone not only your vocabulary but your timing now number 3 um what is this kind of guy attracted to he's attracted to your feminine pacing There's a feminine pacing, looking for my water, but it's too far away from me. There's a feminine pacing that quality women respect. And I know somebody said, well, what does he mean by that? Ladies do not rush. Ladies do not rush. One of the most effective feminine hacks a woman can learn is to be slow and deliberate with her movement. Especially with men. You know, if you're in a, if you're in a um, what is it? If you're in a social setting, ladies that capture the attention of, of great men are not women that's just, 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 moving and looking around and and just you know like you like you just like you're on a sugar rush you know slow down i mean physically literally slow down somebody else i can't walk in heels because you walk too fast and i'm not saying you need heels i'm not saying you need heels oh don't send me no email about oh you you sexist you talking about a woman need heels no no i ain't say that I said, there's some of y'all that say you can't walk in heels. And the reality is you can't walk in heels because you walk too fast. You see, heels are designed for women because the feminine woman moves slowly. Her, her moves. Now, some of y'all getting offended. You're getting triggered. But, you know, you got to somebody got to teach you this here. She moves deliberately. She moves slowly. You see, you see a woman of a certain level of consciousness. She's not, not rushing. She's not rushing and just, just always running, just always running. No, no. She slows her pace to a deliberate pace, especially when dealing with her man. In other words, not only is this an issue in, in, in the physical pacing of the woman, this is an issue with how the woman lives her life when she's not conscious of who she is and how she's supposed to flow. When God has put a man in your life that you can respect, slow down and move at this man's pace. Stop rushing. Stop answering questions for the man. The man don't need you to speak for him. If y'all out somewhere, don't run ahead of the man. I'm pausing because I know a lot of y'all triggered and you, you know, you, you're ready to cut this off, but you have to come back and listen to it. You, there's a feminine pacing. This is why the Bible says in Colossians 3.18, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Submission is about a woman matching the man's pacing. Even in dancing, the man is supposed to lead, the woman is supposed to follow. Feminine always follows masculine. The only time feminine takes the lead is when masculine ain't doing his job. If you got a masculine man that's doing his job, slow your pace to match, to get in rhythm with the man in your life and stop running ahead of your man. And see this many times as it's almost like, a, what does what I think Freud, uh, Freud, Sigmund Freud calls it a Freudian uh, slip. Is a slip? No, something else I'm thinking about. Where where we we physically model what's going on in our consciousness. When you see a woman with a man and she way out in front of the man, and the man just looking at her from behind, there's there's a consciousness in this woman 
that is not in submission to her man. She's not submitted to his pacing. And it's unattractive. And when a man, when a man is a great man, and he's he's looking for a wife, he's not looking for a woman who's going to physically run ahead of him. He's not looking for a woman who's going to live her life way out there at the distance and he don't he doesn't even know what's going on with her. He's looking for a woman. You see because think about it like this here. A man that would be a husband is looking for a woman that represents him with dignity and grace. But graceful and fast don't usually go together outside of sports. Some of you all need to practice walking slower. You got boyfriends right now. You know, I don't know why he won't commit. I don't know why he won't commit. You're doing a million and one things. You're doing a million. You live in your life in a million and one different directions. He's a responsible man. He's a successful man on his own. You making all of these plans, you and your girlfriend. He's hearing about it, finding about it, finding out about it at some other point. You living way out there. You have not even considered the idea of becoming acclimated to we. You know, when y'all out in the public, you 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 can run off, you know, you on your phone, going off down the street. And he's just looking at you. And you don't realize that you're sending signals to this man that this may not be the kind of woman that, um, you know, I want to really lock myself down with. Because a woman should not run ahead of her man, be it, you know, actually or, you know, in in a subliminal sense. Or is it subliminal or? cerebral sense in terms of the way she lives her life for for a few reasons letter a when you run ahead of a man let's look at the physical side if if you're out with your man see this is nonverbal communication he's here you way out here letter a you are sending the message that i don't expect your protection and you see a great man is in your life to protect you if you don't need protection um he doesn't really feel a role in your life. And when a woman runs off to do her own thing, the message is she doesn't expect his protection. I can handle it. Now watch this. You are, you are half a block away. And somebody jump on you. And the first thing you say is, I can't believe it took you this long to get here to save me. Well, you are out of position. You are out of place. You are out of order. Let her be. What does it signify? When you, when you forsake your feminine pacing, let her be. It says you don't respect his role as leader. Why would a man want to sign up to be your husband when everything, every message you're sending from the way you live your life, the way you make your decisions, the way you physically run ahead of him signifies that you don't respect him as a leader. When a woman runs ahead, she is clearly not respecting his role as leader. I know I'm going to get some pushback on this, but that's all right. I'm putting it out here. Let us see. What does it signify? It signifies when you run ahead of a man, it signifies that you're not proud of being next to him. You're not proud of this partnership. You may feel like you need it for optics. This is how a man is thinking. Oh, she just wants this for optics, or maybe she wants it because of the financial benefits, or or maybe I have some connections that can advance her and this or that. But, you know, any woman that runs ahead of a man, she ain't proud to be with that man. I know I'm messing some of y'all up. I know a lot of y'all saying, I'm sure glad my man ain't on here watching this tonight. But, you know, when you see uh, the Queen of Sheba go and deal with King Solomon, uh, Sheba submitted to Solomon's pace. Go and read the story of the Queen of Sheba going to sit down with Solomon to see if he was everything the world said he was. And she found out he was actually more than the world uh, reported. But she submitted to Solomon's pace. When you find a man who's living his life in a certain way, Babe, you got to learn how to just chill and fall back into your feminine pace and submit to the rhythm of that man. Stop living your life all the way out there. 
All right, number four, how do you become a woman that's attractive to a great man? What did we say number one was? Uh, number one, we said manners and etiquette. Number two, we said your language. Uh, number three, we said uh, your feminine pacing. Hope you understood what I meant by that. But now number four, and finally, facial expressions. You see, kindness starts in the eyes. This is why smiling is so important. You see what smiling does to the eyes? Any man that's a great man does not want a woman that is not kind. A mean mug is no way to attract kings. So you can't say, well, Pastor, I want a, I want a husband. But then you walk the street all day like that. And then people say, hello. And you, you look at them and look off. Because your religion tells you that, you know, for you to be pious, you got to act like you're offended that men speak to you. How is a man supposed to start a conversation with you? He can't speak to you. If a man can't have a conversation with you, how can he get to know you? How can you get to know him? So if, 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 if you don't even have a temperament, if you don't even have a facial expression that welcomes a man saying hello, uh, chances are you ain't going to, you're going to pretty much not really get a man like that. You got to at least have a facial expression. A mean mug is no way to attract kings. If your heart is warm, but your face is cold, you have a closed first business sign on your face. Your heart is warm, but your face is cold. What this says to the world is, I'm closed for business. Don't speak to me. I don't want nobody. I'm going to be a problem if you get me anyway. And a lot of times behind all of that there, all of that toxic religion you done learned is a woman who has the biggest heart in the world, but nobody's taught her that she has to communicate that in her facial expression. So we got a lot of women that carry all these frowns and all of this serious this corporate, this corporate look, you know, this, 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 this board meeting look. That's how you walk around, just this this board meeting look. Just you know, I don't, I, I Bishop, I, I, I can't understand for the life of me why no men are ever ever approaching me. You even got your boardroom voice. You know how women do it in the boardroom. You deepen your voice so that you can be heard by these men in here, and you bring that out into the world. You need to chill, babe. Don't a woman talk like that. And ain't a woman out in the real world looking like that. Women, healthy women smile. Oh, but you don't know what I've gone through. Well, I don't know what you've gone through, but whatever you've gone through, you need to stop. You you don't need to allow that to hinder your future. Go and get therapy, whatever you got to do to deal with that. But in the meantime, muster up enough to smile. The Bible says um, in Proverbs 15, 13, a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Isaiah 3 and 9. Boy, my time is gone. Wow. Isaiah 3 and 9 says, The show of their countenance doth witness against them, and they declare their sin as Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. But notice it says the show or the display of their countenance doth witness against them. Don't allow a cold, stern, stern countenance to prevent you from being attractive to the kind of man that would call you wife. Your wife material. I believe you just needed to hear the, a lot of you, I dare say, Nobody's ever sat you down to teach you this. So consider this a father-daughter talk. And I believe if you take and you put these things together, probably along with a million other things um, that, you know, people who are more astute than I could probably come up with, you can change the energy that you're sending off. Because all of this right here that I just laid out for you is about 
the energy you put out into the world. Husbands are attracted to your energy, your spirit, in other words. That's what I mean when I use the term energy. I mean your spirit, the spirit that God has put within you. You know, your manners communicate your spirit. Your language communicates your your spirit. Um, you know, your facial expression communicates your spirit. Your feminine pacing communicates your feminine spirit. And so I declare and decree that God, for those of you that desire to be married, I declare and decree that God is raising up your husband. And I declare and decree that you are preparing yourself internally to be attractive to the man that will qualify to be your husband. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you today as I have said some things that uh, were difficult to say, may have been difficult for some to hear. God, let them, please let them understand my heart in this. And God, let the wisdom of this deposit into them to the point that it will shift the way they actually show up and live in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, um, don't forget to go by the website, sign up for the mailing list, check out all of my online programs while you're there. Um, go to Amazon, check out all of my books that are there. Uh, my God, I appreciate those of you from all around the country, all around the world who support uh, Lisa and I, um, especially along the lines of buying, buying all of our books and what have you. We love you for that. We thank God for that. I want to appreciate all of you that uh, continuously give and sow into our lives and into our ministry. Um, if you need counseling of any kind, there's a link in the description for better help counseling. If you need counseling, if you use that link, it will afford you 10% off of the cost of their counseling. And uh, they in turn will make a deposit into R.C. Blake's ministries because I recommended them to you and you responded. All right. Well, I think I'm done for today. Uh, I want you to know I love you. I appreciate you. I thank God for you. Uh, you're on top and you're going higher. God is more in store for you. So you know what I say to you. We will see you at the top. God bless you. Until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.